on earth am I to do? Oh, I now know which is the right boat to Anvard, but what purpose will it serve to go? I could go back to the Hermits, oh, but I don't know the direction. Oh, bother! I suppose we could go on. After all, this road is bound to get to somewhere. But that all depends on what you mean by somewhere. The road kept on getting to somewhere in the sense that it got to more and more trees, all dark and dripping, and to colder and colder air. And strange icy winds kept blowing the mist past him, though they never blew it away. If he'd been used to mountain country, he would have realized that this meant he was now very high up, perhaps right at the top of the pass. But Shasta knew nothing about mountains. I think I must be the most unfortunate boy that ever lived in the whole world. Everything goes right for everyone except me. Those Narnian lords and ladies got safe away from Tashbarn. I was left behind. Aravis and Bree and Wynn are all snug with that old hermit. Of course, I was the one who got sent on. King Loon and his people must have got safely into the castle, and I've been left out. Now I'm lost and cold and hungry. <laughs> What's that? Who's there? I know you're there somewhere. Who are you? One who has waited long for you. I can't see you at all. Are you... Are you a mountain giant? You might call me a giant, but I'm not like the creatures you call giants. Oh, you're not a ghoul, are you? Oh, please do go away. What harm have I ever done you? Oh, I am the unluckiest person in the whole world. Tell me your sorrows. What? You believe you are unfortunate. Why? Why wouldn't I? If only you knew what my life has been like. Tell me. Well, I'm no better than an orphan. I've never known my real mother, nor father. And I was brought up by a cruel fisherman. Oh. And then, finally... I was able to escape, but for what? To get chased by lions, and get mistaken for someone else in Tash Barn, and get frightened half to death by some beasts near the tombs, and suffer from heat and thirst in the desert, and then, just as we're about to reach our goal, and get chased by another lion who wounded poor Aravis and... and... Now I'm lost and miserable. I do not call you unfortunate. Don't you? No. But what about all my trouble? If nothing else, it was bad luck to meet so many lions. Most people wouldn't even meet one in a lifetime. And I met at least four. Oh. Maybe more. You met only one lion. What on earth do you mean? I just told you, there were at least two the first night, and... Oh, there was only one, but he was swift of foot. How do you know? I was the lion. But... I was the lion who forced you to join with Erebus. I was the cat who comforted you among the tombs. I was the lion who drove the jackals from you while you slept. I was the lion who gave the horses the new strength of fear for the last mile so that you should reach King Loon in time. And 
I was the lion. You do not remember who pushed the boat in which you lay. A child near death, so that it came to shore where a man sat, wakeful at midnight, to receive you. But... But you also wounded Aravis. It was I. But what for? Child, I am telling you your story, not hers. I tell no one any story but his own. Who are you? Myself. Myself. The mist was turning from black to grey to white. This must have begun to happen some time ago, while he'd been talking to the Thing. He knew the night was over at last. A golden light fell on him from the left. He thought it was the sun. He turned and saw, pacing beside him, Taller than the horse, a lion. It was from the lion that the light came. No one ever saw anything more terrible or beautiful. Of course, Shasta had lived all his life too far south in Kalorman to have heard the stories about Aslan, the great lion, the sun the emperor over the sea, the king above all high kings in Narnia. But after one glance at the lion's face, he slipped out of the saddle and fell at his feet. He couldn't say anything, but then he didn't want to say anything, and he knew he needn't say anything. The High King, above all kings, stooped towards him, its mane and some strange and wonderful perfume that hung about the mane was all round him. It touched Shasta's forehead with its tongue. Shasta lifted his face and their eyes met. Then instantly the pale brightness of the mist and the fiery brightness of the lion rolled themselves together in a swirling glory and gathered themselves up and disappeared. Shasta was alone with a horse on a grassy hillside under a blue sky and there were birds singing. <laughs> 